Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so this is my monthly roundup one. Um, I'm filming this pretty near the end of the month at this point, <laughs> so might as well make it my monthly roundup one. Um, so May has been interesting. Um, so I've still been very busy in work. Um, a lot of the stuff that I've been doing have been behind the scenes rather than on the floor, which is it is weird. In some ways, it makes me feel like I'm being lazy because I know how hard it is to work on the floor. And although I am doing so much stuff behind the scenes and I am like constantly busy with what I'm doing behind the scenes, it doesn't feel as hard as working the floor feels. So in some ways I kind of feel like really lazy, but in other ways I I feel like I'm being like super productive and actually everything that I'm doing is like really helpful and it's not just to, to do with the new training system that we've got coming in, although a lot of it's been to do with the new training system we've got coming in. There's also something coming up next month, which I need to do a lot of prep stuff for, which isn't necessarily training related, but yeah, it's been interesting in work. It's been hectic and busy, it was not helped by the fact that I lost my voice during the month, um, so my jaw pain is sort of uh, a little bit up and down at the moment, I'm still in that phase of my cycle where the pain is lesser anyway, or has been lesser anyway during the last few cycles, um, I won't know probably for a few more days whether or not it is having a, an impact on it, um, we'll see, we'll see how it goes, I'm still waiting on my referral letter, that's all I know point um so in other news for this month um i've finally been able to meet up with um the two friends who were going to witness signing my depot and my depot has now been officially signed and um today i conquered my gp and the banks and that felt really good um so it's been, it's been kind of weird, so I sort of, um, I sort of, uh, like, we, we signed it on Saturday, um, and since then I've been sort of, like, like really nervous about how, the whole process, and a little bit overwhelmed about how much work it's going to be, um, I'd sort of started making contact with a few other places that I needed to make contact with, but, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a very daunting process when you're, like, right, right at the start of it, um, and then today I left the house and I went outside to go to the GP's first and that was when I started getting really excited about it and then I left the GP's office with like them having photocopied it and there not being any issues and then I felt really really happy and really excited um so first of all I went to one of my banks and they were really busy at the time so they told me to come back later so I then went to one of the other banks sailed through it um got through all that like really um i think they of the three that i did today so i did my um my primary bank my because i've only got three that i had to worry about so my primary bank my bills bank because i have like a bills account uh which is in a completely separate bank to my primary one for reasons that had to do with stuff that happened at the time because i i only actually set up the bills account um when I was moving in with the person who screwed me over financially. <laughs> um, and we, we, so it's never been a joint account, it's always been just my account. Um, but I decided to set it up with a completely different bank um, because, you know, her money was going to be going into it too. So it just made sense for it to be something that was like in my name, but like completely separate. Um, and I've just continued to use it as my bills account since because like literally taking that money away somewhere where I can't see it with like my spending money is uh, it's, it's good from like a psychological standpoint. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so uh, because I couldn't do like my, my primary bank first because my primary bank was A, the one that was closest to me and B, the one that I wanted to do first because it's usually the one that I do first. Um, so this is like my primary one that's where like my pay goes into um so because i couldn't do them I, I went and i did my bills one um next and it was the shortest waiting time but probably the longest process to get through everything um 
but uh, the, the person that I dealt with was really nice and really friendly and went through everything step by step and yeah I, I think I liked that one the most even though like they were all like equally good in terms of like customer service and stuff like that um that was the one that I kind of liked the most um because you know they there were more questions that were asked to sort of clarify things it wasn't sort of oh we're just trying to get through this as quickly as possible um then I did my mortgage one and I like I literally only have a mortgage with this bank so this was the one I was most worried about and I almost didn't do um but because my bills bank is like right next door to that one and my primary bank is further away I was kind of like you know what I'm here I'm at the end of town I don't go to very often I might as well at least go in and inquire make like if I don't have everything that I need to do it now I can ask what it is I need and then I can get it sorted um so yeah that was the one I was most worried about because I was like like I know with my other bank accounts where I stand because I have actual accounts whereas with them I just have a mortgage and I like I know from the online side of things it works a bit differently so this was the one I was most worried about um and like even like the person like who who arranged me to speak to somebody was like do you have your card with you it's like no I just have a mortgage <laughs> but I have my details with me for, for the mortgage is that oh yeah no that's fine I was like okay okay good I've got what I need um and that one's relatively straightforward although he kept putting in my number wrong my account number wrong so you can find me <laughs> um and that was second longest waiting time and I would probably say probably the fastest process of getting through everything maybe I mean they're like both of the other two were about the same sort of length of time for getting through things um I'd say they were both about 15 minutes whereas the first one was about 25 minutes um roughly speaking um I then headed back to my bank my primary bank and they were still busy so I only lived like five minutes away so, was, so they were like I'll try coming back at like after a certain time so I was like okay fine so I went away, went home, had some lunch. Actually, before I, before I went home, I decided to get myself a fancy milkshake from the milkshake shop, uh, milkshake bar, or whatever they're supposed to be called, milkshake cafe? I don't know. Milkshake place. Because um, <laughs> I was like, um, I know, I, like, I've heard good things about it, and I was like, well, I've never actually had a chance to try one, so I'm just going to go in, and I'm just going to, you know, buy the chocolate one that I can and have that as a treat because, you know, Yes, everything's going really smoothly, pretty much, apart from, like, the Barclays one. Uh, but I just want, like, a little celebratory treat, because going in and doing this stuff, even, like, when you're really excited and positive about it, it's a little bit intimidating for somebody like me who is, like, highly introverted, and I would much rather just be able to deal with most, like, I'm so glad that most of everything else that I have to deal with is probably going to be by email. Um, I still need to find out, like, the details, like, my bills and stuff, but, like, that's for later in the week. <laughs> that's for later in the week and next month um in the beginning of next month um it's like there are still like so many things that i still have to do but i'm trying to pace it out a little bit so i don't get so overwhelmed with it because it is so much that you have to do um so yeah the the uh uh so yeah i, I went back to another bank and they're like, like come back after this time and we'll see if we can we can fit you in then so like fine so i, I got my milkshake i went home and had lunch and then I headed out again, and this is all this is all happened today, by the way. This is this is why my monthly roundup is being taken over by this stuff. <laughs> um so went home, had lunch, um, waited until about half an hour before the time. Um I know it's like they're only like five, ten minutes away, but I was like, you know what, I wanna head there for a little bit early, just in case like they wanna push the time back again if I arrive on time because they're still busy. Uh, at least this way I can, like, I'm there for the waiting period rather than, you know, whatever was happening with it this morning. When I got in, got seen right away. So I'd say they, they had the longest waiting time and either the the quickest turnaround or, like, the second quickest turnaround because, as I said, the mortgage one was about the, about the same length of time um, for, for the actual process of it, but was definitely the second longest in terms of actually sitting around waiting. Um definitely not the longest because you know technically my primary bank made me wait for several hours <laughs> i may not have been like sat in there waiting but i was still waiting for several hours from like the first point in time that i'd made contact with them until the point in time that it was finished 
it was definitely several hours but um yeah that's all done now so I finally done what I want to do at the beginning of the year so this now is a, this now is best month <laughs> As I said, it's going to take a while for me to get everything sorted and um, I'm going to paste it a little bit. Um, I'm trying to sort of do it in like first wave, second wave, third wave kind of things. So some of the more complicated things that I have to deal with, like the land registry, that's going to be like third wave. And the reason that's going to be third wave is because I know it's going to be like there are forms to fill in. I know it's going to be a little bit more difficult and there are things that I, I, I might need uh, more guidance with. Um, I know the land registry one, I definitely want to, at this point now that I've got the, the decal in place, I want to speak to my mum and be like, yeah, can you give me, like, because like, I know she's changed her name. It's like, how did you deal with the land registry stuff? Did you deal with the land registry stuff? Um, but again, I don't know if she, she actually did deal with the land registry stuff. Um, and, and it's one of those things where it's kind of like, does it affect things too much if I don't deal with it now? Um, because obviously, hopefully, um, in a couple of years, um, when the mortgage is up for renewal in this place, me and my partner will be looking to move in together. Um, and at which point, you know, it could be sorted then. Um, but I don't know if I need to get it sorted now in order to not be into trouble with it later. It's like, I, I don't know, it's one of those things where it's the one that I'm dreading the most because I looked at this form and, uh, yeah, um, and, but I could always kind of go, okay, you know what, I'm going to make contact with a solicitor and get the solicitor to help me through all this stuff because it's complicated and I want to make sure that I'm getting it right. Um, so yeah, that's definitely part of the, the, that's one of the last things I'm going to be doing. Um, I conquered my first wave of things that I wanted to do so that was like um bank that was work that was making contact with um tax man <laughs> um I, I still haven't sort of like completed the process there I've made contact they need to get back to me and then I need to send them stuff um I'm sure but at this point it's like I've made con the initial contact uh, the initial request for it and now I have to sort of like wait for them to get back to me so that the process can continue. Um, I've started looking into what I need to do with my bills, uh, but bills are part of the second wave, um, mostly because they may have to involve me making phone calls, um, which is why I was like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm comfortably in, I, I comfortably kind of completed first wave. Um, there are a couple more things that I might want to sort of, well, no, I think I'm, I'm, I've completed first wave and it's now into second wave. Because first wave was basically all the easy things, all the things that I knew I could do quickly, all the things that I knew I didn't have to think about too much. All the things that I knew for sure what I knew what I was doing were always going to be part of the first wave. That's why they were the first wave, because they were like, okay, these, these are the easy things. These are the things that are not going to take me too much time to do. These are the things that I don't have to use the phone for because I find the phone much more intimidating than going into things person or emailing um like the second wave is basically going to be like bills and all the things that I'm probably going to have to like all the things that I've not been able to find a clear cut answer for what I need to do was always going to be second wave um and then technically third wave I guess was passport and land registry because those are the things that are going to have the longest turnaround regardless because you need to sort of like send stuff off um but I'm, I'm going to start prepping the prepping for the third wave during the second wave because the first wave has gone so smoothly. Um, so yeah, that's kind of been my May. My May has mostly been about work, um, but has also been about exciting things, um, name changing things. Um, so it was great three of my friends, by the way, um, obviously. <laughs> uh, so we sort of like had a bit of a cheese night. Um, <laughs> just for reasons um, it had been mentioned like earlier in the month that one of them when we were doing our usual uh, movie night call uh, was having a cheese night and we were all like oh let's have a cheese night and we did um, so they came over here uh, we got everything sorted um, we we had um, we had macaroni and cheese a cheesecake and then we had like this um, baked 
she sing with a speech and he plays which was really nice um and those three provided stuff to dip into stuff and the sidey type stuff and the drinks <laughs> well at least lemonade um and they kind of provided more of the cheesy stuff and that's literally so you know we could like divide everything up between us divide and conquer as it were um and then we watched um a series that one of them sort of recommended and we all kind of really got into it it's like to begin like during the first episode we were all sort of like mulling around and getting food and stuff ready and we were a bit confused about what was going on um and then by the time we'd finished eating i think we'd seen a couple more episodes and we were all really engrossed i've actually continued watching the series since then because it's actually a really nice evening um all in all although it then was ended up being like the first of three nights in a row where i didn't sleep properly <laughs> So obviously they left late and I, I and I had to get up for work the following morning because like we always have like our movie night type things on Saturday because it's one day um like usually I don't work Saturdays and one of them usually doesn't work Saturdays and then the other of them only works the occasional Saturday so like Saturdays always kind of made sense as being on like doing doing the movie stuff with um so I was working this Sunday because I always work Sundays. Um, so I went to bed late, um, but happy and woke up early because I was working and I was really tired. And then the following night I ended up being up later than I'd intended because my brain started going on a little bit of an overdrive. Um, because of all the things I have to sort in work. <laughs> so I ended up um, sort of getting up a few times and making notes. Like, I wasn't doing any worky work type stuff that particular evening, but I was like, oh, I, this is something I need to remember to do tomorrow. So, like, I wrote it down in my notebook and I was like, oh, no, no, I need to remember to do that tomorrow. So, I got up and I wrote it down in my notebook. So, it was one of those sorts of evenings where I just struggled to stay asleep because my brain was thinking so much about, you know, what I had to do over the next couple of days because the, the training system was launching on, on that on the following day um so I ended up being really tired again and then the following night because again new training system launched um the inevitable things don't work the way they're supposed to so um, I'd actually I actually done really good I actually um came home switched off for a little bit stopped thinking about it because like I knew I had more time the following day to get stuff done um and then when I actually went to bed, my brain was went into panic mode that I wouldn't have enough time to do everything. And then I started doing stuff um, just because like I, I couldn't sleep until I, like, I had to do something or else I wouldn't be able to sleep. So I, I did like the most sensible thing I could, which was just read through some stuff that I knew I needed to read through so that I would have a better understanding of it. And it actually did help the following day because I had more of an understanding of what was involved with it. I was able to sort of put things in place which I probably wouldn't have thought of um, until that day and then I would not have had time and I would have felt more overwhelmed but actually you know just reading through this thing even though it took me an hour and I ended up being really tired the following day it at least allowed my brain to focus and it gave me a game plan and going into work the following day I had another list of, of, of things that I need to get on with and things that I need to do and I felt much more in control and a lot better for having done it and I know it's bad I shouldn't like work when I'm not being paid to work but sometimes like because I'm one of those people um where I'm very productive production productive focus so I, I've got a very productive proactive focus um in, in how I do things um and I can't relax if I know there are things that I need to do now, when I say there are things that I need to do, it's things that I feel are important enough for me to need to do them, um, by which I don't mean housework. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to housework. I'll do housework if I know I've got like people coming over um, or if I've just cleaned out the gerbils. So like the hoovering definitely gets done at least once a month. Like I'll do the dishes whenever I need to do the dishes. So it's not like I avoid housework completely. It's just... Is one of those tasks where if I don't get it done, it doesn't bother me. 
um, because I don't prioritize it as a task um, in my everyday life because I live on my own and I don't create that much dirt. Um, I'm relatively clean, that's, that's what I'm saying. Um, I'm, I'm, it's the, the clean as you go sort of mentality, so it, it doesn't really get that uh, bad, <laughs> they say. <laughs> um, but if like I've got other things that I know need to be done, um, like for example, say if I've got a some time off coming up, and some of that time off is going to be spent with me going to various places, I wouldn't be able to relax until I knew I had my suitcase in a state where I just needed to just throw in a few extra things. I wouldn't be able to relax until I knew like I had. Um, whatever in place so that you know I, I wasn't going to forget it so like you know it, it's that kind of thing um or if like i'm having to plan something i don't relax about it like i've mentioned before um, i don't relax about things until i know there's enough in place that most of the work has been done and i can just sort of like start enjoying it, it it's just the way that i am so if i'm sort of there and i'm going oh my god, I've got so much work to do and I don't have enough time to do it, I feel better being allowed to get on with that work or at least do a task of it or at least conquer part of it. Um, that then sort of allows me to sort of like go, okay, now I feel like I've got more time. And then I relax a bit more and I enjoy my relaxation a bit more if I feel like... I'm, I mean, it is, it's, it's, again, it's one of these things, it's, it's very... Um, very ingrained in sort of like my personality and I, I don't know if I mentioned this on the channel before but I'm fine if I'm never meeting up with someone I'm absolutely fine about it but if they suddenly say that it needs to be an earlier time in the day um and I've not been like like no, I've only been told about it like say a day or so before I go into panic mode because I suddenly feel like I don't have enough time um and that I'm going to lose sleep and that I'm going to not have you know what I need to do with done before meeting up with them um and it, it's it's very much that kind of mentality that i have where if i know i've got loads and loads of tasks to do um and i feel like i don't have enough time to do them i would much rather do part of it just a small part of it on my own time <laughs> even though i could get paid to do it uh, because it just allows me to relax better and that's just, you know, that's just how I am. I'm one of these people. I can't relax if I know there are things that I need to be doing. And I'm in a situation where I can do them and it will make my life easier in the long run if I do them. Um, and I, it's just the mentality that I have. And most of the time, and my, all the time, I always feel better for doing it. I like being productive. I like, um, I like accomplishing things. I mean, there's a reason why, like, I have such a set morning routine. Um, when I say set, it's it's not set time-wise. Like, if one section of it takes a bit longer than usual or takes a bit less time than usual, I don't worry about that. It's not like, oh, this has to take this amount of time. It has to be done. It's not like a really fixed routine. What it basically is is roll out of bed, uh, check some stuff on my phone however long that takes to do is how long that takes to do then do my writing then do my exercise then have a shower then edit whilst having breakfast and then get on with anything else that I need to do that day and that that routine will take however long it takes sometimes it will be faster sometimes some bits of it will be a bit longer it's like it's just a case of I like doing that stuff because it means that I feel like I've done something with my day and I still have day left to enjoy um I just like being productive. I like, you know, as I said, I like accomplishing tasks. I like feeling like I've done something with my time. Um, I it's I do get bored quite easily. Um, I, and I think that kind of comes down to it. And I also think there is a little bit of, um, I think I sort of mentioned before, I did coast a little bit when I was in school. Um, and I think part of it, like, I know a lot of the reason why I coasted a little bit in school is because I was unhappy and it was a symptom of the depression that I was experiencing at the time. Um, or the apathetic, and I, I was very apathetic. I've, I've spent a lot of my life being very apathetic and coasting and not working as hard as I should be working, apart from all the things that I really enjoy doing. Um, but I've also, because I 
know if I enjoy doing something and I feel accomplished doing it, it does make me feel better. If Even if it's like a work-related thing, if I enjoy doing it and I feel accomplished for doing it, I'm like, that's a good thing. I, I don't need to be paid to, to, to do that. And it makes me feel better overall. And I think part of the reason it makes me feel better to, to be productive and to feel accomplished with things is because I spent so much of my life feeling apathetic and coasting and not really putting my best foot forward in most of the things in my life. But now I've found stuff that I'm passionate about and that I enjoy doing. I kind of making up for lost time in a lot of ways. And, you know, I... To, to me, to a degree, um, putting off tasks to later that I could do in five minutes and now makes me feel like I'm procrastinating for no reason. And that feeling of procrastination for me, and this is for me personally, I know it's not a universal thing for everybody, but for me personally, because that was what I was like when I was in my like the worst part of my apathy and what I was like in the worst part of my depression, I associate being like procrastinating over things with my depression and what I experienced when I was going through depression. So I would much rather do the task now and feel accomplished because I know that's the feeling I'm going to get from it. And I know it's going to make me feel more positive and more in control of things rather than put it off for the sake of putting it off because for me that reminds me of a state a time in my life that wasn't so positive and where I was very apathetic and you know where I was suffering from depression and I don't want to go back to being that person and I'm enjoying what I'm doing so why would I be putting it off anyway um I've not been told off this month for doing too much of my own time. <laughs> and the thing is, I don't even do that much of my own time. I think they've got this impression that I do loads of my own time. It's like, no, it may look like I'm doing a lot of my own time. But in reality, it's only taking me like literally five minutes to do this thing. And I'm doing it whilst like there's something, like I'm watching something in the background. I'm literally just, I've, I've read this thing and I've gone, oh, okay. Like, I, I never sort of do anything that I'm like, no, I'm better off doing that in work. It's literally things like I'm reading something. And I'm reading this thing so I can understand it better. And the reason I'm reading it at home is when I'm in work, just sat around reading, I feel like I'm not being productive. <laughs> I like sitting around reading in work. I'm like, I know I'm like, I know I need to do this because it is part of my job to read this thing. But I would much rather read it at home and feel more relaxed reading it at home because I don't feel like there are other tasks that are more worthy of my time because I can't do them at home. And I, yeah, I think a little bit of it comes down to that as well. Plus, I take in more if I'm reading in an environment where I'm not having to think about other things. And when I'm in work, I'm having to think about other things. So it's much easier for me to sort of like concentrate and pay attention at home to what I'm reading and like 90% of what I do at home is reading <laughs> and reading and trying to understand things and a lot of it is the stuff that I've already read once in work it's just my brain has not fully understood it and I just want to take a little bit more time to go over it again so that I can understand it properly and, and a lot of it is that's what it comes down to and again I'm trying to justify why I work on my own time I didn't have to I work on my own time because I enjoy it I work on my own time because, you know, I never feel like I have to. I know I don't have to. I know full well I don't have to. But I'm not doing it because I feel like I have to. I'm doing it because I want to. Like, I've done this job and various, like, I've, I've worked my way up and, I, you know, I've been, I've been in this job for, like, 12 years almost. I know full well I don't have to do anything in my own time if I don't want to doing stuff on my own time because I want to. Like, I'm not the type of person that would do stuff on my own time if I didn't want to do it. Like, full stop. If I don't want to do something, I don't do it. Like, I'm... <laughs> I'm a curmudgeon. <laughs> so if I'm, like, putting in the effort to do something, it's because I genuinely want to do it. Um, and that's very much what it comes down to. So, yeah. <laughs> So again, in, in get, getting this back on topic, month has been 
partly very consumed by work and partly very confused, consumed by name changing joy and once again I'd like to clarify for you guys just at the end of this video now, um, as I mentioned before when I mentioned that I was changing my name, the name I'm changing is my legal one and not my pen name. My pen name is separate from my legal one, has nothing to do with my legal one and it's going to remain that way. Um, my I'm not going to say what my legal name was or what my legal name is, legal name is now, that is not connected to this channel. I'm Isla Golden on this channel because that is my pen name, this is me talking to you as myself but in author mode. <laughs> um, as I've mentioned before, um, so yeah, so yeah. Um, Alright, okay, so I hope you found this one sort of interesting. I know it has not been very focused on being a monthly roundup, but at the same time, I think that's okay given the situation, given the circumstances of this month. I think I've very much sort of like covered where my head has been at this month. Um, so yeah, um, I okay. I hope you've enjoyed this one. <laughs> if you're looking forward to seeing whatever it is I'm talking about next time, and I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, consider checking out some of my others, and if you like what you see, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching. See ya.